This short recording will cover how to import your 1099 data from Excel. We'll start by clicking the 1099 form you want to import from the right side. I'm going to select 1099 miscellaneous. On the 1099 miscellaneous form, select import bulk data at the top. If you need an Excel template, there's one available here on the import page below the select a file box. You can also use your own Excel file, which is what I will do here. This Excel file will allow me to map my header information to the fields the system expects to see. Once I select the file, the system processes the file, and then I'll click Next. If there are headers on your Excel file that our system doesn't recognize, it will ask you to map the highlighted fields. Click OK, and then select an option for each of the box highlighted in red. I'm going to select one for the payer name, the payer city, the payer tin type, the recipient name, and the recipient city. Once all the selections are made here, you can click on the Next button. That will allow you to preview each of the 1099s on the preview form page. Here you can see what the content will look like as you're expecting to see it as it gets delivered to the IRS. You'd be able to switch from vendor to vendor so that you could see any of the vendor's 1099 forms that will be submitted. If you need to modify any of the information, you can do that here. You can also export all of the 1099 forms to an Excel spreadsheet if you'd like to. Once you've reviewed the information, you can click Finalize. If there are any incorrect pieces of information on a vendor record, that message will display here. If you want to fix it here, you can click Cancel and go find that vendor record and make an update. If you're OK with that vendor not loading, you can click OK. The final page will show you the number of records that you uploaded successfully, in this case nine. If any records failed to upload, they'll be listed here as well. In addition, you'll find a spreadsheet that you can download. That spreadsheet will show you the errored records and why that record failed to load. Once you've downloaded that error spreadsheet, if there is one, you can click on Checkout. At this point, if you're ready to submit the 1099s, you can select the ones that you want to submit, complete payment, and click on the Submit button. You can also select the Schedule Vendor e-file here. That will allow you to schedule the e-file to the IRS and any applicable state agencies as of a future date. Typically here, you'd want to select the later date. In this case, I'll select March 31st, which is the final IRS e-filing deadline. That allows me to create the 1099 forms here for my recipients, but delay the e-file until March the 31st of 2014. You also have some other options here relating to exporting and downloading and deleting the selected files if you needed to delete multiple files. We have a separate video that covers in more detail the submit forms and payment page if you'd like to view that. That concludes this video.